Cheers. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome again to another episode of Artist Spotlight. Uh, today, we have a special guest all the way from the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast. Uh, say hello to Greg, Greg Hampton. Hi, Greg. Hey, how's it going, Nino? Oh, uh, Hugh. I will let you introduce yourself and then we just start chatting. And, you know, the whole Perfect. thing here, the idea is to get to know you. So, um, Great. yeah, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Um, again, my name is Greg Hampton, and I grew up in Massachusetts, about 20 minutes south of Boston, a small town called Avon, um, and did the normal thing, public school. I knew in high school that I was, I, I always loved drawing um, from, yeah. a little, from a little kid, and then in high school, I actually heard of art school. I didn't know art school existed, and then <laughs> okay. I, uh, cool. I went to art school, and my, my art career took off there. Yeah. my love of art yeah yeah awesome and then yeah. um so let, let's go back to the the earlier when did you when did you start it like uh when did you start making art really uh well uh, I remember when we were little i guess but yeah 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 um well i loved back in the day um i'm 49 so it was coloring books for me back in the eighties. I loved coloring books and I would just yeah. fill them quickly. And yeah. my parents noticed that. And, um, so when I was filling those books, they started getting me sketchbooks. Yeah. And I started loving, uh, drawing things right in front of me. And yeah. then, uh, in middle school, I started taking art classes mm. and no one in my family were artists. So I have three older sisters. Yeah. And so my parents kind of like, where did this come from? <laughs> and I, I yeah. just, it was something that I, for a child, when you know you're good at something or, or something mm -hmm. is compelling to you, yeah. art, art yeah. was, I was, um, was magnetic to me. And so, yeah. And some, any way that I could do some creating with um, collaging or painting or mostly drawing, but drawing yeah. that was wonderful to me. I just, me and my sketchbooks in the bedroom. It was yeah. great. Yeah. And what, what did you usually make at that time? Back and then it was it was your average uh superheroes and yeah. comic okay. books and things yeah. like that. And uh and then I middle school is when I started getting into um drawing still lifes in my bedroom. Uh mm -hmm. a sneaker, a lamp, yeah, things like that. And that took off from there. And high school is when I was just drawing still lifes all all day yeah. in class okay just just doodling the back of the room like not listening yeah to too, a little bit too much <laughs> that's the i remember the thing. yeah i was Good. in uh i was in sixth grade and i i did a uh, a reel about this on instagram i was in sixth grade and we had a new art teacher that year her name was miss campbell and mm -hmm. she was probably 25 maybe and yeah i used to always draw these shadow boxes i don't know how else to call them but Sure. One it was probably half halfway through the year, um, where I was supposed to be taking notes was filled up with these. They look like tunnels where the the, the boxes went into each other over and over and over. Oh, uh, okay, and okay. So uh, Miss Campbell called me up to the classroom, up to the front of the room while the kids were yeah. working, and she said, um, she she looked at me and she said, "What is this?" Mm -hmm. And I just thought, like, "Oh no!" And I I said, "I'm sorry. I know I should have been listening." And she's like, "This is really good." Mm -hmm. And I was okay. like, what? <laughs> and so she didn't yell at me and she said, could you bring in your sketchbook someday? Mm -hmm. And when she said that, I was just, every nerve in my body was tingling. Uh, and I said, yeah. So I brought yeah. in my sketchbook and uh, we talked about, she liked it. She wasn't an artist, but yeah. she saw something in me and uh, she yeah. was like, so you do art a lot? And I just, it was after school. I talked, I could have talked all day. Yeah. Uh -huh. I talked about 10 or 15 minutes about the art and she said, I do want you to pay a little bit more attention during class, yeah. but I'm glad that you, you're artistic. So that yeah. was a, a, a bright shining moment for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's always, there's always that, um, the thing that happened back then, right. When we were growing up, what, either at school or at home where you just uh, jumps out at you that the things, the small things that people, the fact that people see you of who yes. you are that makes it like that's why you tingle <laughs> that you know. exactly that's that's uh, it my <clears throat> my dad ran his own business uh he was an hvac man 
Okay. And uh, he used to have clients over, like if he was going to work on a, on a major warehouse or somebody was having a house built, they would come over and look at blueprints together and we'd talk about how he wanted to do it. Yeah. And he wasn't a big into <clears throat> my sketchbook, but he knew I had talent. And so when he'd have a client over, if I was in the other room and say, hey, Greg, come on out here. So I'd walk out there and he'd say, go grab your sketchbook. Uh, so I'd okay. go get my sketchbook and it's, he'd show the client or wherever he'd be like, look, my son did this. <laughs> and so I would just, I would just sit there like, yep. And they would look through all the skill life that I was drawing, whatever. And then he'd say, okay, go back in your room. <laughs> but he knew I had talent. He just didn't know how to talk about it. So he'd show uh, me off to, to other people. Yeah. yeah. So. But I think that's, that's another way of, you know, uh, feeling seen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, just being yourself and then people... So I think that's kind of important to, you know, us as the parents too, like doing the similar thing to our kids, like how it's a tricky thing, right? Sometimes we we don't see the small things that um, tingles them. Uh, I'm going to use that phrase, tingles. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, um, as an adult and then also as a friend of a friend who sometimes, you know, don't don't see us or we don't see them. Uh, but so, anyway, those I thought the stories kind of reminds me of of that. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, when 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 people notice your potential and they comment on it, I mean, I think everybody in the world just wants to be heard. Right. They just want their story to make sense. And so when other people see your story and it makes sense to them, and they comment and say, "Hey, what you're doing is is right," it kind of makes yeah. a small person feel like they're doing that they're on the right path of of some right. sort. Exactly. Yeah. Even sometimes they don't themselves don't think much of it. If right. somebody else actually noticing it, and then you start to oh, maybe you're right. Maybe there's something there. So it's like you know, <laughs> um, yeah. And 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 the other the other way also true. Like if you doing negative things, that could affect that person too. So like yeah. you know, but. And maybe. I thought everybody was drawing when I was little. I thought everyone loved drawing. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I had friends over, I'd say to my friends um, who who liked swimming or playing soccer outside, I said, do you want to go in and draw? And they were like, no, <laughs> why do you want to <laughs> go in and sit down and draw? And I'd be like, I thought it'd be fun. Like you could draw yeah. your characters and I would draw mine. And a lot yeah. of my friends were like, nope. No, yeah, yeah. That's so, something that I, 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 you know, on my mind a lot too, like about um, kids. Oh, feels like everybody loves drawing I don't, but i don't know is it true though everybody loves drawing when they were little i think they do at, but that's i hope at so. some point right at some point they kind of some like it some don't and right. i wonder why that is is it because somebody make negative comments to that person and then they become mm -hmm. no drawing's not me or it could be a personal view as well saying oh my drawing doesn't look good as the other person so i will stop right that way i'm not drawing anymore you know, I guess maybe both both true could be, you know, either somebody else. It's funny that yeah. you say that. I did my um my my master's. I was going to school for education. I got my master's in education. And um I did my thesis called I Can't Draw. Oh, and it was okay. just my whole life hearing people say when they would see that I would draw, at least 80% of the time, some of the the viewer would say, I can't draw a stick figure or I can't uh, draw a straight yeah. line. And so yeah. I did my my thesis off people saying I can't draw, and I did a, a ten question questionnaire that I sent out, and it was part of my paper saying like, yeah, why can't why don't you think you can? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would say, um, Susie or Bobby or somebody next to me was drawing really well, and I couldn't draw as good as them. Yeah, so I just stopped. So uh -huh. yeah, it's it's a sad truth, uh -huh. I think. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, maybe that could also nature uh ways of giving other people's you know chances to actually pursue other things so not everybody yeah. gonna, you know be a drawer or you know right paint. i mean the world would be a great place full of artists but we wouldn't get much done <laughs> <laughs> yeah no engineers <laughs> no yeah no engineers, uh, no no bridge chefs. <laughs> right yeah yeah good point um cool cool um so uh so I met you. Sorry, we kind of go back, back and forth here. We, yeah. I met when? When did we meet first time? Was it through the art club or through Instagram? Do you remember at all? 
I, um, it was through Instagram. I started just reaching out to you. I loved your work and I was just starting to do abstract painting. And I was like, who's this guy? What's he doing? Yeah. So I, I don't like to, um, I try to think there's no barriers between artists. Everyone yeah. should just talk to anybody and help where they can. So I just saw your work right. and I was like, hey, what kind of paint are you using? This is, and I started talking to you. And then after about a month of me bothering you, you said to me, hey, what, what happened? I have an artist group that if you want to get yeah. together, if you want to join, I was like, yes. And that's when I joined yeah. the group. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think I think the biggest thing, the reason I uh, reach out to you, not just because your art, but also the way you do your art, I think uh, I, I've seen how you consistently posting on Instagram, like your your process. So you're making art. Mm -hmm. talk, talk to me more about, about that. Like how, um, I think that's the biggest thing that we talk about, a lot about, um, mm -hmm. about practicing small things or, you know, consistency and all of those good stuff in practice. But I think um, one of the things I learned from taking your workshop was the, um, the, a, a friend, a, a follower of mine said it was it would be a great idea to, to not write a book called Getting Past the Whiteness. <laughs> but uh, um, OK, yeah. When when you had a you had a piece of paper and you had a, I think it was a YouTube video. You just talk about just putting down anything, shapes, lines. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to matter. It may be it may be the first layer of 10 layers. So the first layer isn't your finished painting. It's just mm -hmm. getting something on, on the paper. Yeah, uh, yeah. or on the canvas and so for me it was a, almost a year ago i was really fresh at abstract painting because i didn't really understand what i was doing but i just i, I thought i would take a reel i didn't do any reels my first reel mm -hmm. I put the camera on me and i just i had a piece of paper yeah and i i sped it up to like a, a 10 minute or, or no a minute and a half because that's how long reels are it was like a 10 minute drawing and then i did a voiceover and i just said this doesn't matter what you're putting uh -huh. down. I was I was drawing pictures of like chicken bones and carrots <laughs> and things that were right in front of me. Like oh, oh uh, I was like yeah. last last night I had pizza. I drew a piece uh -huh. of pizza. Yeah. I just had to get past that blank paper staring at me, which is the most intimidating thing for me when mm -hmm. creating. I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. so I think for uh, if you're a writer, just sitting yeah. down from the computer and they say just write. Right, 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 right. Similar to so practice, isn't it? Yeah. Similar thing. And so when I, I had seen you just drawing um anyone who follows you on Instagram, they see sometimes I love it when you're doing your your package that you send out and you do the little squiggle uh shapes yeah. on outside the package. Uh -uh. yeah. But yeah. those those lines mean a lot. And they're the some the the lines that I do, I mean, sometimes I just write down my grocery list. Uh -huh. I get out a piece of paper and I'm like, eggs, tuna. <laughs> Just put it there. I, I'm just getting on there. And then uh, after that's done, I'm like, I kind of like the way that E looks, but I want to cover that G. Uh, so I'll just get my first okay. color and just scribble over that G. And then that's how it starts. Yeah. 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 Just getting it, getting it going, basically. Just getting, yeah. Just, get, just, it's like a, a recipe. And just once you put the first ingredient in, everything <laughs> else will just start to come. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so you said that you, you started a year ago, or it said before that, start doing abstract work. Um, so but what did you say again? You, you started abstract work is about a year ago? Or about? Yeah. Ago? Okay. It feels, um, feels like more than that. <laughs> I know. It feels like, yeah. a, trust me. Okay. Um, I was in, I was always, I've always been creative. And so for about 10 years, I was into woodworking. Uh, okay. And, I was making, um, not as a business, but I was making tables and uh, headboards and bookshelves and things. My dad was really into it, but he was doing it out of necessity. When he was younger, uh -huh. like he built a wall in the house because a wall needed to be there. Okay. Or he built a, st a stabilizing mm -hmm. beam somewhere because he wasn't doing it for fun. Yeah. And so I was doing it for just a hobby. And then um, during the pandemic, an artist that I really admire named Joseph Martinez he just put mm -hmm. something up that said, does anybody want to be pen pals? And I was uh, like, he's not going to, he's not going to write back to me, but uh, I wrote him a letter. He put his address uh, up. Uh, I wrote him a letter and uh, he wrote back to me. And then we started FaceTiming and I was just like, Oh my gosh, this, this man who this wonderful yeah. artist is is asking me what I'm, what kind of art I'm into. And I was just like, yeah. I'm just doing woodworking right now. And he's like, uh, Oh, have you ever done anything else? 
And he was into woodworking too, but he was he was fine, fine art woodworker, um yeah. craftsman. And I started painting. He because yeah. he does um he does portraits and other kind of paintings, but I was just like, I want to try a different avenue. And he's mm -hmm. like, What's stopping? What's stopping you from trying something else? And I was like, I, yeah. I, I have to be vulnerable. And I was just like, I'm scared. I'm yeah. scared of not not making good art. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so he was just yeah. like, just just try. And so yeah, yeah. I started doing these big um not big but like 10 by 10 paintings and i was like this is horrible <laughs> like uh -huh. over and over again this is uh -huh. so bad and then i yeah. just um i was doing some collage work um this okay. this artist named lisa rotner um, um leslie rotner she uh -huh. was doing a workshop and i said i'll take that i'll try i liked what she was doing and i did yeah, I, yeah. I did collaging for about a year okay okay and then um after doing collage for about a year is when I started talking to Joseph. And then the hard thing transitioned for me was with abstract, it's more emotional. Mm -hmm. And the viewer looks at it and says, I feel something or I don't. Yeah. Uh, like next okay. page, skip. Yeah, yeah. And with wood with woodworking, um, it wasn't so much emotional. The woodworking I was doing where it was like everything had to be square and right, true. Right. Yeah, and work correctly, and then I got into this this new medium of just like yeah. anything goes. So it was a big transition from woodworking, where everything had to be yeah. stand up solid and straight. Yeah, yeah, functional. And then I was just doing paintings where I was just like, yeah. I like it, I don't like it, and so it was yeah. it was hard to train my brain to 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 be loose. Mm -hmm. well, I was also, very um, rigid. Uh, yeah. Also, also the idea of function, like. It's a different kind of function, uh, I think. Right. Functional in the in the in the math world, maybe you know, yes. making making table is is functional in that way. Abstract art is functional in the more loose, uh, I don't know, abstract way. <laughs> you know, it, it's hard to talk. Yeah, abstract is right? hard to talk. It works or it doesn't. Right, right, and and, and probably that's also another another reason where. It's hard for people to point um, a value in that because right. you know functional is easy to say the value is you know putting stuff on the table that's the function you right. know? <laughs> after regard what is the function of that it's more like emotional and and deep, deeper meaning to to that is very um, you know you can't sometimes you can't see them you just have to feel them the value of that it's very personal too. Right. When uh, I was when I would make a table or a headboard and people would see it in my wood shop, they would 90 percent of them. I'm not saying they liked it, but they understood it. They were like, oh, mm -hmm. I, I see how you're making this table. You're going to have four legs and you're going to have an apron underneath and you're, it's going to be a plank table. So I know you're going to put planks together. And they understood yeah. it. Yeah. But when I show them a, a piece of abstract, a painting that I'm doing, yeah. um, the same people can look at it and go, I, I, have no <laughs> idea, I have no idea what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and so the right people I, also just, can... I say this, I just say, does it work for you? Because if it doesn't work for you, then either I didn't fulfill what I was trying to get past, or that abstract art may not be for you, and that's okay. Right, right, yeah. But you also find the other people who who understand your your abstract art. So, yes. Right. Um, yeah, right. And you know, it was the same thing for me when I first saw your your large paintings. I had yeah. never seen anything like before, but I was looking at it. I was like, why is that why is that resonating with me as strong as it is? I, I couldn't you understand why. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was an emotional feeling. Cause yeah. when I looked at one of your paintings, it I wasn't getting technical. Just that color next to that color worked. Yeah. Yeah. And the okay. size. And so that's one of the things that I was having a hard time with myself when I was putting the I do much smaller paintings, like six by nine inch or whatever. I started with that. And I would yeah. just look at on my desk and say, "Are these colors fighting each other? Are they working together?" What? And that was one of the hardest things to teach mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't take yeah. color theory in college, so I, I wasn't really understanding yeah. the contrasting yeah. things like that. Yeah, it's funny. I was like color theory in my I I took color theory in college, and it wasn't my favorite thing to do because it's kind of confusing for me, honestly. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just the word theory itself, it just uh, had a little bit like a little rash on it. Like when I hear theory, 
for some reason. <laughs> I think it's because it's too technical. It for my head, it's just, <laughs> for my head, it's too technical. You know, it's like the word is yeah. too technical, too like rigid. And Perfect. it's just me. It's not like it doesn't mean like that one's wrong or I'm right. It's not like that at all. It's more like the way I perceive things, the words means to me a certain way. It's part of it is, you know, my past too. Like I'm not very good at school. Like I'm not liking school and theory makes me feel like, huh, what? Can we just do it and right. feel it and, and look at it? <laughs> but I think when I took the class, even though I kind of like kicking and screaming with, you know, all this theory and, and exercises, like making color block, you know, all that stuff. I didn't like it at all. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's stuck to me somehow, right? It's, uh, I, 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 stu- I, I get the gist of it, I think, but I cannot mm-hmm. like actually breaking it all down again in the same way they, the way they explain it to me. It's more like, this is how I see color theory in my world. So I, I kind of filter yeah. it through my head. You know, how do I simplify paintings through colors and what is limited color theory means to my world kind of thing, you know? So, uh, oh yeah. So anyway, that's... The, the way I look at it with what you're saying is um, a strong house has a, has a good foundation. Mm-hmm. And that foundation is made up of many bricks. I'm uh-huh. going to say bricks, but yeah. and for me, color theory or um, some of the fine art classes I took, they didn't fit. They 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 weren't the whole foundation, but they were one of the bricks that helped build my foundation. Mm-hmm. So I did use yeah. it. They were there. I just it was it was amongst many other things that helped build my foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, and also, it's like. Uh, I guess I'm I'm still stuck with the word theory. Maybe maybe the word for me is not theory. It's more like uh, tricks, <laughs> tips and tricks <laughs> exactly. about colors. Like how do you tweak those colors to make it work right. together? You know yes. what kind of recipe that works together? Like is it too much salt or is it too much, you know, salt and sugar and put a little bit of lemon to it that makes it sing a little bit because you have acidic to right. it. You know those kind of thing. Like you, yeah. Uh, and I think it's a lot of experimentation with the color itself just trying this yep. at least for me in my world just trying this out and see oh that works oh that doesn't work you know those kinds of, but i you know anyway so um i understand you that's that's about about color um so uh so abstract is is your thing right now you doing more mostly abstract or still doing other things too Sorry, you froze for a second there. I thought you were just smiling at me for a long time. You froze oh, okay. for about five seconds. <laughs> Am I still frozen or no? I froze or no, no, me... you're fine. Okay. Now. Okay. I was asking if you if you your focus right now is abstract. Or are yes, you doing some um, other things as well? Um pretty much strictly doing abstract. Um and um that's not true. Uh, over Christmas time I wanted to make greeting cards and I started just mm-hmm. looking up how, how to do watercolor online. Watercolor is very hard. Uh, and yeah, so it's um, different. yeah. Yeah. That's just something I tried to teach myself also. So I'm still doing watercolors. Um as the seasons change, I, I mm-hmm. try and do small postcards and greeting cards of what's outside my window. And uh yeah, yeah. I, I like to do that with watercolor, but uh, when I'm cool. sitting down to paint, it's I'm doing abstract mixed yeah. mixed media. Yeah, and then most of your abstract, what tools are you are you using mostly? Like what brand? It's and- fun because I never would have thought, uh, but I'm like, this is my best friend. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> um, the silicone brush. Ah. I know some people use um they use sometimes like wedges or whatever you call them like scrapers. Yeah, but yeah. I have a big one and a small one, and for uh, some oh, reason, cool. I don't know what it is, but it's it's the it's the straight line and and the the rigidness of this. But then I get to I, I get to make it fluid. I get to right even right. though it it doesn't have the bristles. Something right, like right. this is something that I get to um, say. You're you're giving me a barrier, but how can or a um I guess a limit, but I'm going to see how I can make you fluid and more soft and round right, even though right. you're square and plastic yeah. so is that plastic or rubber i i think it's rubber um rubbery okay so it's yeah. it's rigid but it's not stiff so there's some some kind of flex to it a little bit right yep so yeah 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 i think it was like 
five bucks off the internet. I got two of them for five bucks. But um, yeah. I okay. took a class and I forget when I started getting into abstract and I was trying to call theory, I was trying to learn layers. Mm -hmm. Layers were very, I was like, I want to do layers. And I, I was looking at these artists and I was like, how does she do that? And I had no idea. Yeah. I forget the woman's name. I took a class and I said, how do you make your layers pop? I can see the one below it, but there's mm -hmm. one above it. And how do you do that? Mm -hmm. And that's when I learned about fluid acrylics and I fell in love mm -hmm. with fluid acrylics. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. um, for my small works, it was easier because I get, I get like 30, 40 bottles. But yeah. a lot of people said to me, How are you making one layer shine through another layer? And I was like, It's not magic, yeah. it's just fluid acrylics. And so I just I love fluid <laughs> acrylics. Yeah, um, it's, it's a spinner, right? In a way, and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's just like yeah. watery, watery acrylic. Yeah, um, and this this was a uh, a big oh, fine okay. thing, also. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I used to do some tagging in college, some graffiti, which <laughs> I, was, I look I was back on say, now and I'm like, why I was, did I yeah. do that? But I was 18. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, some of your work has that. I was 18 and dumb. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and I still love seeing graffiti. I mean, when I visited Seattle last March, oh, wow, the amount of graffiti was so different. I lived there from 2000 to 2009. Uh -huh. or 2007 1999 to 2007 and it wasn't as much graffiti when i came back this it was a like a i don't know 10 or 12 years since i had been there i was like yeah. wow everything's different <laughs> but long story short when i did yeah. graffiti in college i didn't know about these things and so now when i'm doing abstract and it's just such a big fat tip on a pasta yeah. marker it's, uh -huh. it's a lot of, i like these a lot and they drip okay. really easily i love the drips yeah 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 so cool. yeah yeah have you tried Kirk, uh, Crick? Uh, what's the, the brand of it? Uh, I know Crick. you use it. I haven't tried it yet. No, no. No, I haven't used that one either. I, I just started it using, no, I want to try you used to want. You used to use one um, in the, the workshop that I took with you that was refillable? Yeah, that one is, um, that one is Montana. Montana. Oh, Montana, have, yes. Yeah. This, this one. Crick. Crick. Those I saw online. I haven't bought those yet, and I want to. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I. I, I think. I think it will work similarly, like what you have there. Yes. Um, right. Yeah. This is, is this is a small small bottle, but uh, you know something something to to try out too. Like it'd be basically the same like what you have there. Yeah, it's like a bingo, like a little bingo dauber with acrylic paint in it. Yeah, yeah. I I think it will work the same as what you have there. Um, yeah. The, um, the ones that I use only have about eight or nine colors and oh, that okay. set that you showed me now had had colors that i don't have so i wanted to try those because i, I you can't get those colors yeah right right have more colors on this one yeah it's funny co how colors is sometimes like when we can't stop <laughs> just keep buying different colors uh, oh so it, it's yeah. that's the thing about uh about the the abstract not not to bring up color theory again but the, i'll be doing a painting sometime and i'll look at it and i'm like Hmm. And sometimes I think of your work because I'm like, if I had a dark jelly color right now, this would be great. But yeah, I don't have that color. So the next time I go to the art store, I'm like, there it is. And they <laughs> had the color I needed. So I have to buy two bottles of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Art supplies can. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Approve. And, and yeah. Um, OK, so. What what are you. Let's see. Look at uh, the future. A couple of months. Well, a couple of months, a couple of years from now. Where are you, where are you going? Where are you going with these? Do you have you? Uh, I would like. To, I would like to try and get out of the um, the two D uh, digital like Instagram and and I'm not on any other um, social medias, but I'd like to actually get into some galleries or some some small coffee houses or things like that where I could show my work. I haven't yeah. done that. I've only been doing this for about a year, a year and a half, like really fast creating but um i haven't yeah. shown my work anywhere so i would really oh, love really? to yeah i um okay. yeah so i have this wall i don't know if, if that's I can your gallery i see it that's, yeah that's my gallery right there so it's, it's all my small stuff but okay. um so like these are just eight by eight i don't know if i'm holding them right so i have about 30 of these up on my wall and i would love to just okay you're ready, you're ready. And say, yeah <laughs> can i show these in your coffee yeah. house and but oh. uh Wow, what's that, stopping? What's stopping you? <laughs> uh, I'm just 
just like on. starting creating someone saying no someone seeing my work and saying i don't think so yeah yeah no i get it yeah but you should do it i think uh, yeah you should do it whatever small small venue it doesn't matter it's just you know putting right. putting it out from your yellow room putting it yes. in, a, in a different room in a different room the, yeah coffee shop or whatever around your area i think right. it's a good good step and yeah. where where i live in western mass um the town i live in is mostly just cows which i love it's beautiful pastures and um okay and yeah it kind of reminds me of like um uh one of the islands right off seattle where it's just pastures mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so it's it's beautiful but there's not a lot of, there's not a, a huge art i've only been here for four years in this part of got Massachusetts. It, got it. okay i don't know the art community but amherst yeah. and northampton are towns that are um 20 minutes from me they have a great art community so i just have to go put my there. boots on and go walking around and saying hey wh where where can i show or what's the best places to go see art yeah 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 um and one of my things i do in the future like i told you for the past about a year i've been working small a lot of people have been saying to me are you ever going to go bigger like <laughs> okay <laughs> the biggest i went is like yeah 10 by yeah. 10 20 by 20 and uh -huh. so i was yeah. like i'm afraid i i don't yeah. know nino i don't know if you can put into words better for me but like when i'm working on an eight by eight yeah it's like i'm gonna try and push a whole bunch of emotion or feelings into an eight by eight and i have so many to put that i know how to focus it but when i have a okay a three, 36 by 36 yeah i have to i have to spread those emotions out that's a new yeah, yeah, process yeah. For me. yeah for me for me it's the, it's the easiest way to think about it is like same same energy, but you just have yeah. to use bigger tools. Right. Okay. Bigger, yeah. The, the, bigger size, and bigger tool. So you so know, I just need a bigger one of these. <laughs> bigger, bigger one of these, or or you have to do it more, right? You have basically you cover yeah. more. And sometimes, if you think about it as energy, your small space like this, you have let's say ten ten percent or one hundred percent energy in the battery right yourself you do this yep. a couple of times you still have 80 percent of energy because you only do it twice the bigger right. one right the bigger one you have to do like 10 times to cover right then your energy gonna cover you know reduce into like 50 percent so to reduce that energy then make a big using a bigger brush so you can do it twice instead of 10 times that's right that's, that's the right. thing i can think of like well that means you're bigger but also another way is like, well, bigger canvas, that means I just have to have bigger energy. You know? Right. Just, just, you know, a bigger movement, basically. And that's true because when I do these eight by eights, I'm doing a lot of this. Uh -huh. Pretty much. Yeah. But like now this. I have those those 36 by 36 and I'm doing stuff like this. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. It's a whole different motion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a multiple different ways. To to think about it, I guess you can you can do it like think about it as a transfer thing. So it's the you want to create similar thing. In other words, right. think about it as you just let the bigger piece uh shift the way your body shift. So it might gonna look not the same as what your small ones. It will have right. your DNA for sure. It will have your marks, it will have your characteristics, but it's it's kind of different, you know. Yep. Um, and and you just have to let that happen. It, it's okay, you know. And um, and I'm yes, that's that's it. I'm trying to just like I talk to people about um, just starting with the big one. It's it's a bigger canvas staring at me in the face, so I yeah, do have yeah. intim intimidation. But yeah, the other day I did one. I just I did the same thing. I wrote my grocery list just in much bigger <laughs> okay. letters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. I used the um the black Posca marker, and my uh -huh. wife walked in and she saw it and she's like, "Are you going to hang that up in the kitchen?" Oh, and it was just okay. it was just black black letters on a white canvas, and I said no. And yeah. she's like, I really like it. Was just a grocery list. Uh huh. <laughs> but I tend to write like write like a child sometimes, and so yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. I want you to do one. Just do like that, that for the kitchen. Oh, so nice. see, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, get getting out in the real world. I need to um, I need to meet the artists that live near me and say, yeah. where do yeah. you try and show, or, or where where are people showing yeah, around yeah. us? Yeah. Okay. I think the, the biggest advice I got from different people is that like, if you want, 
to get into connected into the the art community that area you just start you have to start going to say art opening like right you know and so that's how you connect with people not necessarily asking about hey can i show it my work here no right. it's more about appreciating what the the show they're putting out and it's you yeah. know it's a slow moving thing. It's a connecting with people, right? It's it's a people connection. So it's not like, hey, I want this from you. What can you right. give me? It's, not, it's less it's less trans transactional. It's more, you know, genuine connection of interest. Like, oh, what Correct. this gallery? This gallery is interesting. Let me get to know you a little bit more. Like, what kind of work are you showing and all that stuff? Just slowly, you know. Yeah, I I, I agree with you one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, um, sometimes my confidence is lacking. And so I could never see myself going into a gallery and saying, I want you to show my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah. my, 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 my voice is a whisper and I, and I <laughs> might go and, and see what they're showing. That's like you said. And, yeah. and first I say, do I feel like this is where I would fit in? Are they showing exactly. stuff that I like? Right. 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 And then if, yeah. if they do, then I can be a little bit more confident. But at first I'm yeah. very like, I want to stand back in the shadows and just watch and see how long. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's that, I think that's a good approach. It's just like any other, uh, you know, if you want to apply for a job somewhere, some places mm -hmm. maybe you, you can come in and say, hey, can I play, apply a job here? But most of the places, there's a channel for it. Like there is, there's a process for it. Uh, and also there's a the connection part. Like you, you have to know somebody else inside to get into to get a job there i think a similar approach with the gallery i think gallery is an a place that <laughs> you know show other people's work you, you can't just go in there and and ask them to to look at your stuff there's there's a process right. in right. there and, and and then we need to uh we need to go by that by that rules you know mm -hmm. um yeah, it's about respect, right? Respecting their exactly their way, doing things that way. That when way I, you can, yeah. When I first moved to Seattle, I was um, 24, and I was mm -hmm. loud, and I was I was a loud and obnoxious kid from Boston, uh, and <laughs> I saw the Pike Place Fish guys, uh, and I was like, I can do that, and I, I walked <laughs> up to them and I was like, Can I have a job? And uh -huh. they're like, We're not hiring anybody right now, and I was like, oh, Okay, and I said, Write down your name on a piece of paper. Somebody could quit next week, and I'm going to call you. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. great, and I was just like very boisterous and like, yeah, this is no sweat. And then um, about two weeks later, I was in my new apartment, um, eating a peanut butter jelly sandwich because I didn't have a job, so I was trying to do anything. And I got a phone call, and the yeah. guy said, "Can can you come down today?" And I said, <laughs> "Yeah." He said, yeah. "He said grab some boots that you don't mind getting dirty and get down here." Uh -huh. I, I worked there for about six months. One of the hardest jobs I've ever had, but yeah, that yeah, that that um. That electricity there back in the in the late nineties, early two thousands for me, yeah, yeah, it was right on. But it's the exact opposite of what we just yeah. talked about. For that, yeah, you yeah. had to go in there and say, I can do this. Nothing scares yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If not, then you're right. It's these are context, right? It, different yeah. different industry you have to approach it yeah, Totally. Exactly. Yeah. If I think cool. if I walked into a gallery and did this, they might look at me and go, Ah, we'll, we'll call you. Don't call us. <laughs> Yeah, and then also it just depends on the the type of gallery too. But most, yeah, most galleries like they they have a lot of people applying probably. Yeah. Um. So they see a lot of portfolio, and you gotta respect that time. Um. And they're looking too. I just like, yeah. I don't know. It's just my approach. My, you know. No, I understand gotta, it. Yeah. Yeah. You go into their house, so be respectful of their house, their rules, kind of right. thing. Right. Um, but anyhow, who? Cool. Um, any advice? <laughs> if you have any oh, advice for your young self, maybe I don't know. That's the easiest <laughs> way for me to give advice. Like, look at me, eighteen, and I was eighteen years old. What would I tell them? Uh, oh, so much. Um, so much. Yeah, maybe a couple. Yeah, if I went to my 18-year-old self, my 18-year-old artist self, um, I would have said, tr try everything. Yeah. Um, and luckily, going to art school, they made you try everything. But I would say, um, you'll you'll find your your people. Mm -hmm. Just dip your toes in a little bit of everything. I did, I did pottery. Um, 
Oh, and good. Okay. painting and photography. And I loved it all. Yeah. I, as they say, jack of all trades, master of none. I will never <laughs> be a I'll never be a great abstract painter because there's so many different avenues of of expression. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think I would just say to myself at 18, try it all and do uh -huh. it for as long as you want. And then something will something will stick. Yeah. And what whatever feels right, just just go with it and, and listen. Mm -hmm. When when I was in college or when I was a younger person, just like a lot of young people now, my kids, they know everything. They uh -huh. they can't be they can't be taught anything, but just shut your mouth and, and listen sometimes and shut you'll your learn mouth. a lot. Yeah. Okay. So well, yeah. Awesome. But yeah. Well, uh well, thanks again for um uh, chatting and it was know, my pleasure. Great to get to know you more about your practice and all. Um, any any last words before before we go? Any anything? Uh, any last words? This is very simple. Um, if anyone's in Seattle, yeah, go see Nino. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pay you for this. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, there's an advertisement here. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. I, I enjoy. I I loved your work. I enjoyed meeting you. Um. So yeah, okay. it's just just try and meet other artists. That's all I yeah, would yeah. say. Cool, cool. Well, yeah, thanks for stopping by last time. When was that? Like a couple of months ago. Um, that was in March. Yeah. Yeah. And you're a tall guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm six foot seven too. So when people first first meet me, they're like, oh, you're you're not on the phone, you're a giant. Yeah. I look up to you. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> no, thank you very much. <laughs> Come on, I have to put up some dead jokes in there. <laughs> right. I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> Okay, Greg. Well, thank you again for you know chatting. Hopefully, everybody will listen and watch this. Um, inspired by uh your work ethic, your work, your um experiences. If so anyone has really awesome. When I met Nino, it, Nino, when I met you, it was very um. I was intimidated at first, but very easy to talk to, and I just talked about anything. So I'm hoping if anyone looks at my Instagram, thank you. And if you see anything. Feel free yeah. to just ask a question. What kind of paint did I use? How big is that? Yeah. I, I'm more than happy to talk. Uh, oh, your your where? Yeah, where where can we find you? Uh, oh, your at, uh, handle? yeah, GregHamptonArt.com. The website and I mean GregHamptonArt.com is my website and uh -huh. Instagram is just GregHamptonArt. Okay, cool. So find him, follow him, uh, tickle him, <laughs> tickle. <laughs> make, make me tingle. Tingle, tingle him, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, cool, Greg. Well, thank you again. Um, thank you, Nino. Yeah, so I'll see you around. Okay. All right, have a great day. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.